while it makes no direct contribution to the actual fishing, having a trailer that is safe, reliable and well balanced is every bit as important as having a good boat and outboard, because if you can't get to the water's edge, you won't be able to fish. So what is it that sets some trailers apart from others, and is all the hype and extra cost justifiable in the longer term? The best answer to that question is take a look at the small number of manufacturers' names on the trailers parked up on the beach. You might have best seen three, or possibly four. Prominent amongst them will be Indispension, and in particular, the Indispension Roller Coaster, which comes in a range of models to suit most trailable boats. Indispension were the first company in the UK to offer the self-centering swinging cradle to guide the boat effortlessly onto the trailer, even in the worst of retrieval conditions. Since that introduction, pivoting swinging cradles have now become the industry standard. What Indy also pioneered was the concept of the completely bolted trailer. Getting away from fixed positional welding not only allows damaged components to be replaced, but also fine tuning in terms of balance and fit to get the very best from the trailer out on the road. Roller coaster features are pretty much standard across the entire range. What sets the individual models apart is the load bearing capabilities. One feature new to the range is the flushing brake drum. Brake drums of the type used on most boat trailers were never designed to be repeatedly immersed in seawater. But until there is a fully approved DOT standard for the fitting of externally mounted disc brakes, Indispension at least will continue to fit brake drums. Neglect to maintain these at your peril because one morning you're going to find the trailer stuck in the driveway because the corroded brake mechanisms have locked on. This is what the neglected interior of a brake drum can look like after repeated beach launching. Brake flushing is not a new concept, nor is it simply a matter of sending fresh water through the hub to remove traces of salt and sand. But Indy have been holding back until they were satisfied with the performance of their particular system. Water needs to penetrate as much of the drum as is possible if it is to be effective. With this in mind, Indy's R&D people tried locating the input at various points after first dusting the inside of the hub with talcum powder to see how much the flushing would remove. Happy that they have now located the best input point, the flushing system has now gone live using hose lock connectors to fit the same feed system used to flush the outboard motor. How much extra time this will buy for the brakes remains to be seen, but hubs will still need to be opened up and maintained periodically. And let's not forget some of the other features that have earned in dispension such a huge following. A fully galvanised axle and frame, vital for salt water use. Galvanised metal mudguards with steps at either side. A quality two-speed brake winch. An adjustable winch post and axle for fine-tuning weight distribution and balance. Rubber cradle rollers with nylon inserts to ensure free running. Nylon centre rollers to support, guide and protect the boat's keel. And last, but by no means least, arguably the best and most reliable hubs and bearings on the market, protected as standard by a bearing saver grease reservoir. All things considered then, an excellent package, which if treated properly, should provide years of reliable trailing, not to mention easy launches and retrieves. And now, when you get back up top, the ability to flush away seawater before it dries leaving salt deposits to corrode crucial moving parts. <laughs>